Good afternoon to everybody. So as it was uh, said, I will uh, present the Olium data bank and uh, mainly its purpose and implementation. And tomorrow we will have, let's say, uh, more uh, time for uh, going for a demo of this uh, data bank. So our objectives were to build uh, a web-based platform in order to store the information generated by the Olium Consortium. And uh, as uh, any data bank, the idea, of course, is to gather, query, retrieve, export the information, but here in an open uh, standard format in order to uh, facilitate the exchange and the collaboration among the, member, the, the, the partners. Uh, Another objective was also to develop, uh, let's say, or a strategy to ensure the maintenance of this uh, data bank in the long term, uh, as well as its av availability. So before, let's say, starting developing the database, we made an inventory of existing data bank to see a little bit uh, what kind of uh, database uh, is uh, already available. And uh, we uh, observed 12 databases uh, for the conservation of biodiversity and genetic improvement, and those are mainly open access. Uh, there was also three uh, databases, two in Italy and one in France, for the olive oil authenticity. And here only one was partially opened, and you can see directly uh, a difference between the data sharing policy among, uh, depending of, let's say, the, the purpose of the databases. We consider also, let's say, the context uh, of this Oleum project. So you know that uh, it was carried out uh, within the framework of the Horizon 2020, which is, uh, let's say, promo highly promoting uh, data sharing via uh, publication in open journal, uh, but also uh, the data itself uh, on, let's say, repository or data bank. Uh, we took also uh, under consideration the fair data approach, which means that the data should be findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable. You know that uh, uh, often after a research project, uh, you have a database, but the database could be uh, built uh, on a specific algorithm that it's difficult to, to reuse. Uh, we will also present in the next slides, let's say the purpose of this uh, data bank, uh, who will be the users, uh, at least the potential end users, how will this data bank be used, and uh, which information will be available from the Oleum Consortium. But before that, uh, I would like to highlight also the importance of reference data for example, expert groups that are working on the definition or looking for new parameters to, det to detect a new type of frauds. But also there are recent publications that warn on the influence of the climate change on the quality of olive oils. Consequently, the current threshold that is applied in the EU legislation for conformity check could be affected by this uh, climate change. And then having reference data and uh, also regularly updated could help uh, to uh, have a look on this influence in a dynamic way. And finally, the member states uh, would welcome the implementation of solutions leading to the simplification of the current annual reporting of results of conformity checks to the European Commission. So the information that uh, has been agreed to be stored among the Oleum Consortium are the, the, the following that you can uh, see on this table. 
So there are different uh, type of uh, measurements. Some of them have been already uh, presented in the previous uh, presentation. Others uh, will be uh, detailed tomorrow by uh, the partners of the Oleum project. So, of course, I will not go in the detail here on that. But, of course, these measurements for, uh, to, are analyzed by specific techniques. And also, uh, we are, let's say, storing uh, documentation related to these techniques in order to ensure that the methods are used in a harmonized way. This is, for example, the standard operating procedure, but there are also documentation to explain to future users how this method can be used. So there are um, info on the specification of reference material or calculation file, etc. And of course, we will have also the data set uh, coming from uh, all this project. So um, basically, what you can see here is that there are two main domains. One is the management of scientific documentation, and the other one is, let's say, to manage the data. Uh, we agreed to uh, handle process that are not raw files coming out of this instrument. So, to summarize a little bit the concept of the Oleum data bind, as I was said, so we have first a repository to manage document, uh, document and uh, among them, this uh, standard operating procedure. And we have another part that is the database itself. And this database is mainly built on, let's say, the management of uh, an experiment. Uh, you know very well an experiment. So for that, you have several participants of this experiment uh, that will analyze uh, using some specific techniques, uh, several samples uh, for specific parameters. So once this is linked together in an experiment, the system is generating a reporting template, taking into uh, account the metadata of each entities, so organization, techniques, samples, measurements, etc. And this metadata is very important because it's the where you, you define the minimum information reporting. Once the template is uh, available, then you can export it and the, the partners, the participant of this experiment can then fill, report their results. When it is done, this, you can import it back to the, to the system, to the data bank, and then you can, let's say, uh, see the results, uh, search uh, through, visualize them, and also uh, export it back again uh, in an Excel uh, file in order to be, let's say, treated, for example, for statistics. So you see open format is important. Uh, some features of uh, this uh, data bank. So this data bank is only uh, built on open source uh, technology. And thanks to that, it was possible to develop such a system with uh, this uh, flexibility that we will see uh, today and but also tomorrow during the, the, the demo. And this is mainly due to the fact that uh, different modules, program, algorithm are used and, and put together. And for each one are, let's say, uh, within a container that is managed by doctors. So the, inter the user interface is uh, a compromise between the flexibility and simplicity. As you can imagine, more, more flexible you want to be, uh, more complex it is in the background. Uh, an important aspect of this uh, data bank is that we really want to track and trace experiments thanks to the metadata and different version. Uh, this is really important because if uh, a user access to the database and uh, he would like to see uh, the type of data that are stored in this database, it, it, it should be able to understand on, on which 
exactly samples uh, the techniques have been applied, which techniques, uh, which the techniques, uh, uh, what, 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 what were the, the setting of the parameters of this. So you see metadata is really critical. And then, uh, well, the, the product is this uh, Oleum data bank. So here is the welcome page. Uh, you can see uh, on the main menu, then we have the search tool, the repository that we discussed, the database itself, of course, an administration part, and I would say uh, terms of use, privacy statement, and the possibility to contact uh, the, the group. Uh, administration, uh, yes, it's for, let's say, managing uh, the, the role of uh, a user and also its permission and access right. So when now you, you click uh, on the repository, uh, then you, you open this, the main window of the repository where, you, where all the documents are listed. And we can see here, uh, as an example, uh, three different documents on three different categories, calculation file, SOP, and the reporting file. We can add, let's say, some descriptors of this document, for example, when it was produced, uh, uh, who are the authors, uh, a description, uh, the, the purpose of this document, etc. By clicking on one of the documents, uh, you will open the next window where you have the details on these uh, documents. As I was mentioning, purpose, description, etc. And of course, if you click on this link, uh, of the document, then you see the details. And for example, here is for the calculation uh, for the fatty acid ethyl esters. So all these documents uh, should help a user to understand how the data have been produced. And also if they want to reproduce, so they have all the information from the SOP, the instruction in the validation report, etc. Now concerning the, the, the management of the experiment, as I was saying, the, uh, highlighting this uh, importance of the metadata is that the user has to be well informed on the experiment. And in this slide, you can see uh, on the left an example for metadata for uh, samples and on the right uh, metadata uh, examples for a technique which is here the GCFID. Uh, so for the sample, we have decided uh, with the partners what are, let's say, critical uh, parameters uh, that has to be considered when a sample is registered in the database. Uh, <coughs> sorry. Uh, you can see that for, for some of these descriptors, you have a red asterisk. So normally this is for, let's say, mandatory uh, fields. And we can decide if a field has to be mandatory uh, or optional. Uh, this is, as I said, flexible. So we can uh, modify, adapt these uh, descriptors depending of, of the technique, of course, uh, uh, depending on the parameters that are more influencing results, etc. And now to illustrate a little bit what I was saying concerning the concept. So you have the first the participant, then you have the, a list with uh, the potential partners that are registered in the database and that will participate to a specific uh, experiment that you identified. So these partners will use one or several techniques, no problem to combine and then also on several samples. So those samples can be uh, individual uh, one or can be grouped in a set of samples. Uh, partners can do the experiment on uh, different samples than another uh, partners using another technique. So you see, you, you can combine uh, uh, what, what you want uh, and, and you build your experiment, knowing which measurements uh, will be analyzed. And then once this is done, the system is producing this uh, report template 
that you can export. Partners filled their results, and then you import back with the results reported. And here, for example, it is uh, the, the, the sum of uh, hydroxy tyrosol and uh, tyrosol uh, when you are interested by checking the health claims on, on label. Dear Alain, can I ask you to uh, try to finish off your presentation? Okay, thank you. So concerning the, 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 the management, there are some rules. In, indeed, uh, as you want to track and trace, uh, once uh, data is used and used in an experiment, then it cannot be, uh, let's say, delete, modified, but you can update it and you will receive a new version. And this is the last version that will be used in a new experiment. Uh, the flip side of the, this flexibility is that you have to be very careful when you want to modify the metadata because then you are creating new variants and this of course is increasing the number of fields in the database. We paid a lot of attention on the confidentiality uh, of this database. So the user has to be a register. There is a uh, uh, a full customized system for the role and also uh, some documents. Uh, you can decide it if it's restricted or data set can be restricted or not. And you select which uh, user can access to this specific data set or document. The implementation, so the Olium partners decided to apply an open access policy. Uh, to the information that is generated during the project. Uh, GSC consulted also several experts from different horizon that uh, uh, raised the fact that uh, such a data bank would be very relevant because almost not existing among the member states. Nonetheless, a prerequisite that is very important for its use for official control is the validation, standardization, and endorsement of those anal analytical methods by relevant uh, organizations like IOC or ISO. In a short term, GRC will be the curator of the data bank, subcontracting IT aspects to a dedicated company, uh, while in a medium and long term, the curation will, of course, depend on who is regularly using it. Uh, main conclusion is uh, the fact that we have an innovative web-based platform, that having a database with a reference value uh, is essential to, conform, to confirm a fraud suspicion. And uh, what we can say is also that uh, it is expected that this database uh, if it's used by the national control, uh, will contribute to better control of olive oil quality, but also to a reduction of trade disputes arising through the use of different uh, test methods and data interpretation rules. In the short term, the data bank will be open to the public, but following the publication of the generated data by the Oleum consortium and corresponding embargo period. In the medium term, depending on the interest of the national control bodies, the access could be restricted to them for confidentiality reason. And I would like to take this opportunity uh, to, to thanks warmly all the partners that contribute to this uh, database. So thank you for your attention. And if there is any question, I will be pleased to answer them. Thank you.